about the ruling made by a Texas judge allowing an abortion for a pregnant Texas mother of two whose fetus has lethal abnormalities. There are a lot of moving parts to this case. We brought the verdict to you live on KPRC 2 Plus now at 9 yesterday morning. I want to take you back to that moment. As I said, I spent a considerable amount of time yesterday uh, reading and preparing for today. And I am going to grant the temporary restraining order for Ms. Cox, Mr. Cox, and Dr. Carson. Um, the idea that Ms. Cox wants desperately to be a parent and this law might actually cause her to lose that ability is uh, shocking and um, <laughs> would be a, a genuine miscarriage of justice. So I will be signing the order and it will be processed and sent out today. An emotional victory for Kate Cox and her family. You saw her there in that meeting. Cox's fetus has a deadly diagnosis, which would also put her fertility at risk. She spoke with NBC Nightly News. Here's what she had to say. It's a hard, it's a hard time. Um, you know, even with, you know, being hopeful with um, the decision that came from the hearing this morning, there's, there's still, we're going through the loss of a, of a child. There's no outcome here that I take home my healthy baby girl, you know? So um, it's hard, you know, just, uh, you know, grief. But um, I think that, um, you know, joy and grief can coexist. And there's, you know, more, there's moments of joy. I said, I'm really grateful for my wonderful two children that I have and my wonderful family. And, um, you know, it's a moment of sadness, but we really have a wonderful life here in our, in our home state. And so, you know, I just try to count my blessings. And that was Kate Cox, the woman at the center of this case, speaking to NBC Nightly News. To reiterate, this case is not arguing if abortion should be legal. This case, Cox versus the state of Texas, is specifically for Cox's medical exemption. Here to help us break the case down is our Rilwan Belogan, who covered this story for us extensively yesterday. Rilwan, good morning. Thank you so much for waking up and joining us this morning. That good morning. Uh, so I want to start, Rilwan, uh, by breaking down key points of this case. So you heard from Kay Cox there. She mentioned um, that she has two kids, the mother of two, like she was already wanting another child. So she and her husband learned that back in August that they were pregnant with their third child and they were excited about this. However, last month at 20 weeks pregnant, they learned, as you mentioned, that the fetus had a rare chromosomal disorder that would have caused um, likely life risk, uh, risk, life risk to Cox herself. And the birth could have been a stillbirth or the child would have died shortly after birth. So she reached out to try and get an attorney this week. This week, the attorneys with the Centers for Reproductive Rights filed a temporary restraining order asking a judge to issue it and the judge did so so what it means that right now that temporary restraining order is in place which blocks the state's abortion law for cox just for cox for 14 days to allow her to get this procedure okay rowan all good information uh, question for you do we know the timeline of when kate cox could receive this emergency abortion so we asked her attorneys this specifically and directly, and they said they are not going to share this for the safety of Cox, her family, and her doctor specifically, because as you can imagine, some people might have reactions to this, so they're yeah. just keeping everything hush at this point. Yeah. As we know, the doctor part of the lawsuit practices here in Houston. Were you able to speak with this physician? I did speak with Dr. Domla Carson yesterday briefly. She didn't have anything that she wanted to state on the record. She is named in this lawsuit herself and in a statement by the Attorney General Ken Paxson that he released yesterday about this ruling itself. Okay. Uh, speaking of the state, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxson's response to this ruling. 
So yesterday, late yesterday afternoon, he sent out a letter reacting to this. And you can find that letter on our website, clicktohouston.com. And I want to read you a line particularly. This letter was sent to three Houston area hospitals. Those are Methodist Hospital, Texas Children's Hospitals, and Women's Hospital of Texas. These are the three hospitals that Dr. Carson has um, privileges at, meaning that she can work at these hospitals. So the letter addressed to those executives there. And the attorney general writes, quote, the temporary restraining order will not insulate you or anyone else from civil and criminal liability for violating Texas abortion laws, meaning that not necessarily the state, but because of Texas law, that any civilian could file an, a, a lawsuit against mm -hmm. any of these three hospitals, the doctor herself, for for doing this procedure. And under state law, that could face, she could face 99 years in prison or a hundred thousand dollar final fa uh, fines for each penalty and violation that goes against Texas law. So yep. it's unclear if the uh, Texas Attorney General's office will do anything to the state Supreme Court at this point, right. but that's what we're closely watching here. So at this point, we're not sure on any sort of appeal coming from the AG's office. We expect the AG's office to reach out to the Texas Supreme Court to mm -hmm. try and block this measure. That is what we're trying to see if he and or his office will do at this point. And a professor and constitutional law expert with um, South Texas College of Law, Houston, told me yesterday that's something he's really looking to see if it does happen. If the attorney general's office does plead to the state Supreme Court, what they decide could then be precedent in Texas mm -hmm. and in the nation. Yeah, and all eyes across the nation uh, are on Texas right now because this is the first of its kind uh, lawsuit. This certainly will set a precedent nationwide. Mm -hmm. It will if if the state Supreme Court does take it, they take this up, whatever their decision will be a blueprint for others trying to seek the same procedure. However, one of the attorneys for the Center for Reproductive Rights said yesterday that this is not tenable, that women do not need to file lawsuits to try and get this procedure done. So in the meantime, we're just waiting to see what the attorney general's office will do, if any. Yeah, a lot of moving parts. Rilwan Belogan reporting for us this morning. Thank you so much for coming on the show and chatting with us. We do appreciate it. Thank you, sir. If you'd like to learn more about the ruling, Kate Cox or Dr. Carson, we have many articles up on clicktohouston.com right now.